Oh. Ugh. Man. Have you ever been so lazy that you just don't want to get the spoon out to stir your coffee? So like the first three drinks are super crazy bitter. Oh, that, that one's a little bit better. Oh, man. Okay. But yeah. Yeah, there is... There's a reason uh, Lazy PC is up on the wall back there. And I got to tell you, that's not just something I came up with in the last few weeks. Like, I've had that name, been running with it since junior high school. And uh, that's going to put that, like, closer to 20 years these days. Yep, I'm old. All right, so here we are with the Falcon 180. You know, we got some talking to do, so let's just get to it. Uh, there are four videos before this, so if you wanna check them out, we have my initial unboxing of thoughts, disassembly, reassembly, first flight, and we're even gonna throw in that little skit I did about Yixing slash Banggood customer service support up there. So feel free to click on any of that if you wanna see it. Um, Basically what I'm gonna do is I'm going to give my initial review on the out of the box experience right now. And then from here, we get to the exciting part of the mods and the upgrades. And then the final review of the experience of what the Falcon can be. Because here's the thing, just to jump right into the pros, is that I see a lot of potential in this quad. Um, this is a 180 frame. So it's smaller than a 250 frame, which when you have the same carbon fiber layout with the same carbon fiber thickness and the difference of the 180 arm to the 250 arm, that's less leverage when you hit something of breaking that frame. So I see a durability increase and a better power to weight ratio because of the compactness. And then also, I do see a solid set of equipment here. I see good 20 amp ESCs, I see good motors, a good flight controller, a decent receiver and transmitter if you get that as a package. Um, they're not great. They're not the best top of the line stuff, but they're things that should be good and equal a good quad and be plenty durable as long as you're using it within you know what it's capable of. So, you know, durable frame, solid set of equipment, great power to rate ratio. The problem is, is that ends the pros because the stock tuning out of the box is crap. It's damn near unflyable. And I'm sorry, like I don't, I really don't want to rag on this thing, but that's that's how it is. It's just, it handles, handles like a quad that's supposed to be like doing aerial photography or something. Like sure, you can get it upside down, but by the time you get it upside down, you don't have enough time to get it upright unless you were 100 feet in the air to begin with. Um, so you know, the whole point of a, a acrobat or a racing quad is, is lost in the stock tuning. And then, you know, you do have some weak points in the landing gear as well. These things, they will break off if you go through a couple crashes with them. So yes, I said the frame is durable. These little guys, they ain't so durable. And the receiver here in the front, might have to fix that. The receiver here in the front is pretty well in the sacrifice itself should you crash forward in a regular setup. Another con, that does come with the 180 frame is that you have very little build volume. Now, Ishin has actually tried to do, uh, try to minimize how much wire you have to run to things with the way that they lined out the power board. However, they also have pretty much no documentation on how to plug that power board in. So we're gonna work on that. And we're gonna try to get it set up that way it's a reference for people who are building this in the future. And then that leads to my last con where the official Banggood slash Yixing support for this quad 
is very weak to almost non-existent. Uh, non-existent, sorry. Um, meaning that you can buy the quad, you can buy all the replacement parts, but good luck getting any documentation on how any of that is supposed to go together. That being said, unofficial support is pretty pretty strong within the um, racing quad community. There is a good Facebook group that I will link into the description, as well as you know, I'm creating my own reference material for people to use as well. So, you know, unofficial support is there. Official support is really lackluster, and that's that's just the end all of it. So, you know, I see this quad actually being a very decent quad. Oh, another con, camera platform. It's it's pretty much crap, sorry. Uh, you know, it works okay for just the FPV cam by itself. It's pretty tough to get a different cam on there, so yeah. You know, I do see the Falcon being a pretty fun quad to fly and being very durable and, you know, should do really well. You have all the equipment that really belongs on a 250 frame on a 180. So if you're able to get the thrust out of these propellers, whether you're using 4045 bull noses that come with it, or even 44 or uh, 4045 tri-blade bull noses that you could put on it and should be able to run within thrust limits, um, this quad should be pretty damn fast and agile. It's just what's it gonna take to get it there? Because coming out of here, it's not like that. So is it good for beginners? I wanna say yes, because it's gonna be durable, but the only way I could say yes is if you have someone that's experienced set it up. So that that's a real tough one. So here, <laughs> it's like, can this quad, is it good for beginners? Yeah, if you're buying it for your beginner friend and you're willing to set it up for them and you have experience. But then that leads to the very next question is how many of those people would buy this and not something else or not build them something custom to begin with? So that's the thing. I think that's why we don't see a whole lot of Falcon 180s out there. Um, I believe this had a potential to be a great quad, but the lack of documentation, the crap stock tuning um, just didn't make this a good out of the box beginner quad, which is why more people picked up the Racer 250, even though it has the weak ESCs that can burn out instantly. Moving on from here, we got mods and upgrades. So that should be exciting. Bring out the real potential that is in this little package that I want to see. I want to see this thing fly great. And then from there, I will do a final review as well. If you hadn't noticed here, I have the actual uh, NACE32 and CC3D flight controllers that were that would have came with this if you had ordered them in there, as well as the specific OSD chips that are relevant to the NACE32 and the CC3D. So I'm gonna test everything, you know, multiple different ways to see how it acts with the different flight controllers as well. It's so like I said, I like to be as thorough as possible. So stay tuned it might take me a little bit to get all the progression out there i am getting to the point where i'm going to release a video a day although it won't be a video on the falcon it could be the 250 it could be another piece of gear so you know thank you for watching thanks for letting me ramble i'll try to cut this down in editing i guess and uh can't wait to see you guys out there flying